a bomb back in my turbo? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 23rd episode of the show, Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 228th episode overall titled The Phantom Phenomenon. We begin this episode with a view of Earth, and something shining is flying toward it. You can tell this is a shot from the movie because the Earth looks way too good for TV. Meanwhile at the soccer field, Justin and friends are playing while annoying parents cheer on, and Justin kicks the ball into some dad. Then his friend scores a goal. That thing from space comes, landing hard. Justin asks what that was, and his dumbass friend suggests a sonic boom, saying, Oh well, and they run off together. Stupid kid. We're back to more soccer, and now that dad that got the soccer ball to the face says it's the last point. Guess this isn't a real game? Justin kicks the ball super far and it disappears into the forest. His friends follow the ball down the hill into the forest, getting to the bottom near a tree. Then some kid asks if he found the ball while he stares off screen at something, and this is when we finally find out that this kid's name is Nico. He runs back up. On the ship, Debutox has counted all of her jewels and gold and she still doesn't feel like it's enough, despite Elgar saying she has $10 million worth of money. Then, Divatox sees Angel Grove Bank, and she wants to rob the bank. Here's a question. Why? Remember when she was trying to get revenge on the Rangers for murdering her fiancé? In the forest, Nico is making Justin triple duty promise that he won't tell anyone what he found. Is Nico six years old? They look around a tree to see a spaceship, and Nico suggests that there's aliens inside. Then, a twig snaps somewhere, and Nico gets scared, running away. Justin follows. At the bank, Bulk and Skull are working security duty as police officers again? I guess they're back on the force? Then Bulk stops an old woman with a grocery bag, sticking his hand into her ice cream, thinking she hid money in it. Nope. She hits him, walking away. Elgar, Rygog, and Peronchons are there in really funny disguises, figuring out a plan. Elgar tells the Peronchons to untie Bulk's shoes as he distracts him. Elgar then tells him their shoes are untied, and while he's tying them, all the monsters rush into the bank. The bank alarm goes off. At the power chamber, Alpha and Demetria find out about the bank robbery, and they plan to contact the rangers. Everyone runs out of the bank in a panic, knocking down Bulk and Skull. Elgar and crew come out stoked they got so much money, but then they start just getting beat up by something invisible. The money is returned to Bulk and Skull while all the baddies are taken out one by one. The rangers show up confused about what's going on. TJ says to proceed with caution because it seems like it could be a trap. The baddies teleport away and the rangers approach Bulk and Skull, who try to take credit for stopping the bad guys, but then the old woman comes up explaining it stopped the villains. TJ then notices a security camera that would have been recording the whole time. The citizens explained that it was mostly invisible, but sometimes they could see it. One of them suggests it was a phantom. That's convenient. Also, this old lady does terrible karate attempts. Then Cassie sees something behind a pillar, but she's not sure what it was. At the power chamber, Cassie and the others explain that they can't really explain what the phantom is. Also, DJ looks like he's ready to be in a rap video. They explain that it might not be from Earth, and Justin starts to speak, but he decides to stay quiet. They will keep looking. On the ship, Rygog and Elgar explain that they both saw this invisible thing, and Debutox is mad because how do they see if it was invisible? Rygog then calls it a phantom too. We get it guys! Debutox sends them back, screaming at them. Out of mind, Bulk and Skull show up in their new police chief, and um, hey, where the hell is Stone? Did he leave the show without me knowing? Bulk and Skull are ready to protect the gold mine, and Elgar and gang show up, and Elgar says he wants a shipload of gold to go. That definitely sounds like he says shitload. He starts firing at everything, and Bulk and Skull decide to save the day but instead they just actually just drop their badges, quitting, running away, screaming. In the power chamber, TJ wants to check the surveillance camera, but they think they see something, but Cassie says, no, that was nothing. It's actually unintentionally hilarious, like Cassie's just stupid. They then see what's going on at the gold mine, so shift into turbo. They get there and the Phantom has already taken care of everything, so Elgar and gang teleport away. The Rangers decide to split up and look for the Phantom because he could still be around. Cassie then sees the Phantom in the reflection of a car's side mirror, Coming around, but nope, nothing. Then she sees the translucent outline of him in front of her, and she pokes him. Then she asks who he is, and he says, a friend. She asks where he came from, but then he just disappears. Cassie explains that the others has his phantom was black armor with a helmet and how he was invisible, and she definitely has a crush on this ghost dude. Cassie, chill out. He said a single sentence to you. Demetria then says that the source of this ranger's powers is the planet Eltar. She suggests that he's an Eltarian voyager, and Demetria says that they won't know his purpose until he tells them. Justin then asks if he could have gotten here by spaceship, and Carlos asks if something's going on. Justin says he doesn't want to say because he doesn't want to break a promise, and Ashley points out that promises can be broken if there's a good enough reason. I'm getting old Justin being babied by the rangers vibes again, and I don't really like it. Justin leaves and Carlos tells him to remember that they're always close by thanks to the communicators. At the forest, Nico is camped out with binoculars and snacks, watching the spaceship. Justin shows up and he explains that he's waiting for the alien, and when Justin says there's no alien, Nico asks him why he's even there. I mean, fair point. Then Justin tries to eat some space cookies, and Nico says no, they're for the alien. 
Okay, this bit's kind of funny. Rygog is secretly there with Piranatrons, happy that a ranger has led them to the Phantom. Then outside the youth center, Carlos gets off the phone and Ashley points out that if Justin was in trouble, he'd call. So here's a question. Who did Carlos get off the phone with? Turns out it was Nico's mom saying that they're playing soccer. They decided to just check on him and TJ almost teleports out in public. Come on, TJ. Deep Talks is also watching the spaceship and she wants him to show up and she also wants to bone this ghost. Porto says that maybe he just needs incentive and Deep Talks tells him to go send Rygog the detonator. Justin's communicator goes off and he lies saying it was his watch. Then he tells Nico, oh darn, you have to go home now, which is really funny. Nico says, no, he has permission to stay out late, so suck it. Also, it's definitely like 11 a.m. Then Piranatron show up around them and Nico offers them some cookies because they're the aliens, but then they just kick it out of his hands. Okay, Nico is low-key funny. The others aren't getting a response from Justin worrying. Meanwhile, Nico and Justin are being held back while Rygog is placing the detonator on the spaceship. He activates the timer laughing. He then hides behind a tree again, like an elephant behind a leaf. Then Justin gets free, telling Nico to run. Justin takes on the Piranatrons and he tries to call the others, but he gets held back again. Then Rygog and Divatox count down the timer. Here comes the Phantom Ranger, running toward the spaceship, getting the detonator and tossing it into the air, letting it explode. Divatox then says to fire the torpedoes to destroy the spaceship. We see the Phantom Ranger fighting off a bunch of Piranatrons, and then Justin tells Alpha to send the Rangers, doing a really cool instamorph. The others show up, helping Justin with the Piranatrons. The Phantom Ranger sees that the torpedoes are going toward his ship, but the other baddies have recaptured Nico. The Phantom Ranger decides to save Nico and he asks if he's okay and Nico says yes. Then the spaceship gets blown up by the torpedoes, so Rygog and the Piranatrons teleport away. Wouldn't it just have made the spaceship big? The Rangers make sure that Nico is okay and Nico says he's fine, but it's his fault that the ship is blown up. Then the Phantom Ranger somehow makes his ship reappear. We saw it explode, that's BS. TJ thanks the Phantom Ranger for helping them and he doesn't say anything, getting into his spaceship flying away. At the soccer field, Justin explains that he ran away, and Nico is telling everyone how he was saved by the Power Rangers and explaining how the spaceship got blown up, but the other kids don't believe him at all. Even that douchebag dad says, no more tall tales, getting the game started. Then Cassie shows up sitting next to Carlos and Carlos thought she wanted to play today. Again, these kids are like 10 years old. There are age divisions for a reason. Cassie wants to know if he'll ever come back looking off. The end. So Cassie definitely wants to make out with the Phantom Ranger, right? I mean, other than that weird thing, this episode's pretty decent. I'm still back and forth on liking and hating Nico as a character, but I will say he's not the worst child actor or character this show has ever had. I still think it's nice to see that Justin has another friend his own age. So the Phantom Ranger. This season pretty much doesn't have a regular six ranger as that spot is taken up by the Blue Centaurian primarily, but the Phantom Ranger is a cool little addition to the show for now. Here's a disappointing spoiler though. We will never ever find out who the Phantom Ranger is. We just learn things about him, but we won't ever know exactly who he is. I'll explain more about that later. So will the Phantom Ranger show up again in the next episode? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you.